a way to make this video viral. We could make it more emotionally arousing. Right, we could play really loud or exciting music. Let's remix, Let's remix it. it. Um, I could say something really provocative or controversial. Everything Gladwell said is wrong. Right? People want to hear the rest of the video to figure out why. Because controversy encourages discussion, right? It gets people to share things. I'm Jonah Berger. I'm a professor of marketing at the Wharton School and author of Contagious, Why Things Catch On. The book is Contagious, Why Things Catch On, and it's all about how companies, individuals, and organizations can get word of mouth to help their products and ideas become popular. I see life as, as a laboratory. You can look around and see people doing something and wonder, well, why does that happen? Um, and my job as a psychologist or as a consumer psychologist is to understand those questions. There's a guy who follows me on, on Twitter who's he has a reasonably large following, and he was like, he was tweeting me, oh, can I get that deal? Like, because I mentioned on Twitter, like, some people are really, really excited about this. And so I think this definitely has social currency for some people. I think other people are going to feel like this is a Going viral has been a concept that's happened since ancient times, you know? It isn't something that is new just because Twitter and Facebook are now tools that we can use. It's a science. It boils down to several distinct, discrete variables that you can pull and toy with in order to make something have a greater success of being viral. I was in college, and as grandmothers often do, my grandmother would send me newspaper articles. And one summer, she sent me an article about a book called The Tipping Point. It brought together psychology and sociology and marketing in a way that had never really been brought together before. But it wasn't necessarily backed up with hard, hard data. It was a good amount of opinion um, and correlational evidence, but as, as we all know, correlation doesn't necessarily equal causation. Why do people talk about and share things? Why are certain things shared more than others? That's not even in the tipping point. There's no section on what makes things more viral or more talkable. And so I really started to wonder, well, why do we share some things rather than others? So Rebecca Black's song has been called the worst song of all time. It's Friday, Friday, gotta get down on Friday. Yet even though it's so bad, it's gotten over 300 million views. And so lots of people wonder, well, why is this song that everybody hates doing so well? And so if you look at the data, you actually see something sort of interesting. You see a spike every week on a certain day of the week. Uh, and when you look at it closely, you notice that it's Friday. So this song is equally bad every day of the week. It's equally bad Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But Friday is a ready reminder, a trigger, to make us think about that song. So in a contagious world, I think we'll see fewer advertisements and more interpersonal communication. Less money spent on how can we interrupt consumers from you know, their television show or their favorite radio program and shove an ad in their face so they'll pay attention to us. And more, well, how can we get their friends to tell them about this product? I think if you're a small company, this book is great news, right? You might have thought that you need a celebrity to talk about you or you need you know, some big blogger to tweet about your restaurant or it's not gonna become popular. What this book shows is how anyone can apply these principles to help their idea catch on. If you're a big company, I think you need to change direction a little bit. You need to stop focusing on finding special people and think more about how to create content that's going to be more likely to be shared.